everyone, it's Ross, and uh, today I want to talk to you all about cutting season and getting cuttings uh, of fig varieties, basically sticks, and turning them into trees. And that's exactly the lesson of this video, is that those little sticks turn into large trees. So number one, less, the biggest lesson of cutting season is do not get carried away. Otherwise, you'd be like me, you've got too many trees, and then you just want to trial all of them. You want to grow as many as you can, and then you're like, oh, crap, I wasted all this money and all this time. I mean, you could use information that people already provided out there um, to grow really high-quality figs for your area. That's lesson number two, is that Fig variety is very important, and selecting the right one for your climate, your environment, um, and you know another variety that, and and also a variety that has the right genetics. If you want a large fig, uh, you know a, a fig that has the genetics of producing small fruit is never going to be a large fig. It's just not going to happen. Same thing with the eye, right? You have a lot of bugs, you got a lot of insects, you got a lot of uh, rain or humidity, and you got a large eye, it's gonna be a problem. If you live in a place where you have a lot of rain, again, that eye is a problem. If you if you live in a place with a lot of rain and you have a, a variety that has, you know, uh, a skin that isn't really, isn't really conducive to rain, or maybe it splits very often, it's not, it's not going to do well where you live. Um, if you live in a climate that um, is a short season, maybe you only have 150 days of your growing season or 180 days like myself, you need to mostly rely on varieties that are early. Um, if you don't get an early variety that has the genetics to be an early variety, it almost certainly will not be an early variety unless, of course, you have the help of a greenhouse or something to extend the season. So it's very, very important. And the only way you're going to figure this out is through research and through watching my videos. Um, you know, there's so many resources out there, guys. Uh, rfigs.com is a huge one, number one, um, if this will ever load. This is a really nice resource to get recommendations. You can create a thread on here. You can join for free. You can create a new topic and say, what figs do well in blank, right? So where do you live? California, uh, Arizona, Texas, wherever you guys live, put that in there. And you'll get all these people that know what the hell they're talking about and have been growing all these figs for a pretty decently long time and can give you a pretty good idea of what varieties of figs you should be looking for. Um, you obviously don't want to listen to every other to every person that replies to your thread, um, you know. But you're going to get some good some good feedback there. And everybody on this forum, you can fit, you know where they live, right? So if they live where you live and they say this one does pretty good, it tastes pretty good, obviously you should be listening to that person, right? Um, so if you live though. There's, in my mind with figs, there's two different climates. There's dry climates and there's humid climates. And a lot of figs will do well in dry climates. Um, and there's very few or more, le much less that will actually do well in humid climates. So figure out which one you live in. And if you live in a dry climate like California, you can pretty much grow anything. Um, now, and at that point, you're going to be looking for taste, right? You're not really going to be looking for performance nearly as much because you have the perfect climate for a fig. So it's all about where you live. I can't really make recommendations for every single person. What I can do is give you guys, one, either introduce you to that website, or two, you can go to my spreadsheet here. And this is the spreadsheet's in every single video I've ever created in the description. And you can go here to this tab. It's the top performing figs for my area. This is a hu more humid climate figs and um, 
a climate with short seasons. This is exactly what you would want to look for. And these are my top choices, and this is exactly what you'd want to do. Now, the other, now if you live in a dry climate, you'd want to look for something that has high flavor. So you could go to my spreadsheet again and go to the list of figs that I grow. These are all the figs that I grow, and I've given them all a rating. And most of them, this rating will be pretty solid in a dry climate. So that's one way of going about it. Now, the other way of going about it is to look at this other sheet here, which lists out the flavor categories of figs. That's one, one solution you can go for. One route is to say, all right, well, I already have a berry fig, right? So let me go with a honey fig this time, and I'll see what a honey fig tastes like. And then I'll go for something that's maybe a uh, light berry, right? And I'll see what a light berry fig tastes like. Or maybe I'll get a sugar fig like Celeste and say, all right, well, you know, then you get a pretty good idea of what different flavors you like. And then you can see, okay, well, I really like berry figs. So I like the fruity category. I like the complex berry category. And I like the light berry category. And then you can see all these figs in this category here or in each individual flavor. And then you can say, okay, I'm gonna pick one of those. And that's what you're gonna try for this year. So there's many different ways to go about this, but again, it's very important. One, slow down, choose wisely, especially for something that does well in your climate. And uh, genetics are super, super important. So those are my two big tips. The third tip, okay is that you got to buy these these things um now you could be somebody who has been a part of this community for a year six months you could be somebody new um you could be somebody who's been doing this for five plus years there's always opportunities to make friends to trade to meet new people to uh to even get things for free um if you go on rfigs.com guys all throughout the cutting season all throughout the winter time people are going to be giving away cuttings for free for nothing all you have to do is be a nice person <laughs> a friendly person and somebody who's kind of active on this forum and you will get a pretty good collection in no time it's literally that easy so if you're not willing to go through that you're not personable maybe you guys are uh, hermits I don't know but the other option would be to buy them all right so if you're gonna buy them here's my advice find a seller that you know and you can trust that has good reviews um, how do you know if they have good reviews well, there is a rating system on Figbit, okay? And this is where I would buy them. I'd buy them on Figbit. I wouldn't buy them on eBay. There are some good sellers on eBay, but there's a lot of scammers on eBay and a lot of people that really don't know what they're doing. Um, you can get a variety. Let's say it's Mary Lane Seedless as an example, right? You buy it on eBay. Who knows if it's Mary Lane Seedless? At least for sure, or most of these people on this website, it's not always going to happen. I can't guarantee that. But most of these people know what they're talking about, know what they're doing. These people are obsessed with figs. They've been doing this for a long time. And they're at least responsible enough that if something is mislabeled, they can replace it for you or give you your money back. So that's why I recommend using this website. And to find reputable sellers, it takes time. Again, you can make a, th a thread on this website, rfix.com, and say, uh, what do you guys think about what this seller, blank? Or has anyone had any good experiences with this seller? Or, you know, there's also a trusted seller list on this form. If you go to the index of frequently referenced topics here, it's a sticky at the top, and you look at sellers, I'm not sure if it's even on here anymore, to be honest with you. Known eBay vendors. And this will give you a list of people that are reputable. 
for the most part in the community. And some of these people don't really sell that much anymore, to be honest with you. And some of them, you only, you're only able to, to message them. You can't really buy things off of them on, on Figbit. Um, a lot of these people have their own website. But, you know, it is what it is. I've, I've made recommendations myself in the past, whether it's, you know, buying cuttings for myself, which will be sold in November. Um, late November. So that, I know someone in this comments is going to ask that question. And if you're watching this, go down in the comments right now <laughs> and answer that person for me and say, cuttings will be sold in late November. <laughs> On Figbit, um, whether it's myself, whether it's my my buddy Wills, that is the the owner of this forum, was cre the creator, I should say, of this forum. Whether it's Big Bill, who we've recommended in the past, I've also recommended Fruit Nut, who sells on eBay. I've recommended my friend Mountain Figs. You can go to mountainfigs.net. My friend Tony sells really reliable cuttings varieties top quality at extremely cheap prices so um, go here and see the availability send him a website it's extremely cheap so you know it's very easy to do this guys I just want to make sure that you guys know those three things those are my three biggest tips previously I did a video on um, this whole topic and it was like a 40 minute to an hour long video I can't remember how long it was but um, you know I think this really boils it down there's really only three tips um, I guess a fourth one just just slow it slow it down with your rooting you know if you're rooting these or you're grafting these make sure you have the skill required you've you know put out some sacrificial cuttings to to test, gain gain some skill over the winter time. The winter time is pretty long. You only need about three months to root these guys. So, if you can pretty much kill off some, which you will, especially if you're starting off fresh, even myself, you're gonna you're gonna kill some. And every time you kill them, you figure out how you killed it, why you killed it, and how you can fix that and prevent that from happening in the future. And that's exactly how people become better gardeners and growers so on that note um, thank you all for watching again cuttings November late November on fake bid I'm sure I'm gonna get multiple comments on this but anyway guys um, thank you for watching uh, you also guys can follow me on Facebook now and you've always been able to follow me on Facebook but I'm gonna be posting actually videos on Facebook as well um, Probably some of my older things that people, for whatever reason, uh, don't take the opportunity to go back and look at things that happened in previous years. You know, like I, I've been doing this for a while now. Um, I've been filming for a while now, too. So, you know, you can always go back and look at what I talked about in the last video of this exact video, this exact topic I've already done in a, in a video. Does anyone go bother and go back to watch it? No. So, Facebook, we're going to be doing that. We're going to publish old videos on there. Try to get some kind of following going on Facebook. I'd appreciate it if you guys could follow me over there. Um, and then we're going to uh, start putting out alongside new videos on YouTube as well on Facebook. And uh, that way we can have two different platforms help the channel grow a little bit. So. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and uh, have a good night, or actually, good morning, um, and I'll see you guys later. Take care.